So let's talk a little bit about food combining. So uh, if I ask each one of you what you eat for breakfast, it's going to be different. I don't eat anything for breakfast. I've never been a breakfast eater. And I've had breakfast and not enjoyed it. And I tried it for a while and I feel like it's just not for me. Um, I don't feel good. I get sluggish. Whereas they say if you eat a, a good breakfast, you won't be hungry through the day and it will fuel you. Once I put that food in my mouth, I am hungry. I want everything. <laughs> so, and then I don't know what to get and I can't find the right taste and I don't stop. I find that for me, if I wait and I start with a big glass of water, like at least 16 ounces of water, I'm flushing the kidneys, I'm flushing the organs from everything that they've been doing and processing overnight and I get out a lot of those toxins gout, the uric acid, and all the high pH. So uh, for me, it's waiting a couple of hours, and then I'll probably have a piece of fruit. Some days I'll have a salad next. You know, uh, instead of the fruit, I'll start with the salad. And then later on in the day, I'll have a piece of fruit somewhere. And for dinner, I might have some of the pate. Uh, I might just go with another piece of fruit. My diet is really unconventional. Uh, I have my green drinks in between, so that's really what I eat a lot of, what I, I guess I'll call eating, because we should chew our juices, because it gets the saliva working, and it brings in the enzymes with that saliva, and it helps us to digest. One other thing I'll mention is juices versus um, smoothies. So juices, there's no fiber in there, they're very thin, and that's going to go through your system very fast your cells are going to pick that up it's going to go out into the bloodstream and that's going to you know for some people you'll hold on to that for other people it goes through very fast um it's just your constitution is different but your cells are going to pick up some of that so if some of you have juiced and said you don't feel so good that's what's happening you're just not holding on to it it goes through but it doesn't sustain the cells and so then I would try doing smoothies instead because you have the fiber in there and that takes a little longer for it to digest. It stays in your stomach and that may work better for some of you. Okay. Good. So a little bit about food combining is same thing like we've been mentioning, denser food to more watery foods. But this time when you eat, just like in the machine, watery foods first so look at your plate and eat the more watery foods first because you want to get those waters into the intestinal tract but we shouldn't be drinking a lot of water you can have little sips with your food to move it through but once we put in too much water we're diluting the process and then the enzymes can't work to break down the food we've got a big bowl of soup in there now so very little liquids with your meals but if you start with those juicy fruits it's going to allow everything to move through because that small intestine is squeezing it and getting everything out and if it doesn't have enough water in there it's going to pull from your organs water and enzymes if we miss those two things you're not going to be around long so that's the biggest thing in our aging process is the water and the enzymes staying hydrated getting the good pH waters in there so if I'm going to eat, another thing I do is have my dessert first. I don't feel it ruins my meal <laughs> because those sugars want to move through fast. So fruits are sometimes as much as as little as 20 minutes up to an hour, especially melons. Melons and papaya, it's like five, 10 minutes in me and boom, it's through. <laughs> and so um, if I didn't, if I had something else in there, heavy or oily, and they're blocking the doorway to get through everywhere else, then that sugar's sitting on top and it's fermenting and you get bloating and burping and gas and it's not so much fun. And then you also have that gas that's not just in your intestinal tract, it leaks through because that's a permeable wall and you're going to get it in your bloodstream. So maybe headaches, maybe bad um, memory, maybe rashes maybe tooth aches, visions off. There's so many things that can happen by this one little process right here. <laughs> so we don't want to be like a compost, post, uh, compost heap and have all of that sitting there. It's got to move faster. 
So your denser foods like meats and oils and dairy, they take anywhere from four to six hours, usually let's say six hours, for these things to move through your system. And then you have your starchy vegetables and some of your nuts and seeds, and they will take, say, four hours. I'm just giving a general because you can look all this up if you really, really want to get into that. Um, and then you have your regular vegetables, so starchy vegetables. We're talking even like um, potatoes, um, root vegetables. Even though some of them are very sweet, they still have a higher starch content. Carrots, those can be considered starchy also. They're sweet food, but you'll find them in different categories. Actually, I have a good chart. I'm not sure where Paul's got it in his books. And it's not here. Maybe I'll take it out at dinner time. But I have a friend that made one up, just like a, a traffic light, stop, caution, and go. And so you can look across and say, if I mix this food with this food, oh, shouldn't do that, or shouldn't do it so often, or it's a good one. And all the foods are listed on there, too, on the back as to their alkaline uh, content, acid or alkaline. And that's a really nice thing to have on your refrigerator. So blow up a chart if you can find it. There's some old charts that have all these circles, all these spaces, and the arrows are going everywhere. So um, there's some other charts around where you can really just line up your food. I want one from this category and one from this category, and you can see if it's good. So starches, they do not go good with acid fruits, they do not, or acid, um, I'll just say fruits, and then uh, they don't go good with, with most of your fruits. And you should not have a carb um, and a protein together, or yeah, starches and proteins, carbs and, and getting all confused now myself. <laughs> so it, it's the, um, the proteins and, and the uh, starches that don't go together either. They won't digest well. You'll get all that bloating. So, um, yep, yep, yep. Um, oatmeal or yogurt with uh, yogurt with fruit in it. That's a horrible combination. Yeah. So I wish I had the chart in here, but I don't. Then I could really show you some good examples. But um, doing that alone can really help your diet. So look at some of those food combining charts, and you'll be amazed at you know what you're doing. I don't know if you know Doug Graham. He calls a sandwich 911 on a bun <laughs> because you have your carbohydrate in the bread. You have vegetables, which is probably your lettuce. You have a tomato, which is your fruit, and then a piece of meat, and it's a horrible combination. The enzymes don't know when to come into play and digest, and they get blocked by other ones, so it'll start doing its job, and the next thing shuts it off, and nobody knows what to do. <laughs> so that's when you can really begin to have trouble. So watch your food combining. Watch what time of the day you eat. I really had to play with things. I can't do fats past three o'clock. I have to have them somewhere between 11 and three or I don't work with them correctly. So you just really have to feel it out and know your body. So nobody can tell you exactly, these are morning foods, these are afternoon foods, these are dinner foods. So can't give you a, a perfect on that, okay?